learning outcomes. After studying this module, you shall be able to learn the basic factors responsible for heredity, understand the experiments conducted by Mendel on garden P Pisum sativum, understand the principle of dominance, segregation and independent assortment, comprehend the applications of Mendelian principles. Introduction Genetic traits are delivered from generation to generation down in families in diverse patterns. Most of the people that have existed compared to or wondered why do they resemble to their grandparents. The archaeological records of human history provide evidences in the form of primitive art, conserved bones and skulls and dried seeds for the effective training of animals and plant cultivation that started 1000 of years earlier. Even despite our limited knowledge about the first identification of the existence of heredity, the domestication and cultivation is indicative of non-natural selection of variations within populations. During the period from 8000 and 1000 BC, camels, horses, oxen and dogs that is members of the wolf species have been domesticated which soon followed with selection of varieties and hence selective breeding. Cultivation of many plants started about 5000 BC including maize, wheat, rice and the date palm evidences for which has been improved in form of stored seeds in some caves in the Tuahakan Valley of Mexico. These evidences clearly prove that for 1000 of years farmers and herders have been selectively breeding varieties of floras and faunas to enhance productivity by giving upsurge to additional beneficial hybrids. The scientific basis of vertical transfer of traits and how they sometimes skip generations was first explained by the Austrian monk Gregor Johann Mendel. Mendel's insight greatly influenced the emphatics of patterns of genetic inheritance and led to the development of new experimental methods. By testing with pea plant breeding, Mendel established three principles of inheritance that defined the transference of genetic traits before anybody even knew that genes existed. Mendel's work, Choice of Experimental Model System. Mendel studied the genetic inheritance in garden P, that is Pisum sativum plants. In the middle of 1856 and 1863, Mendel cultured and tested some 29,000 pea plants. His observations and findings established the presence of patterns in the garden pea that further led to formation of basic principles that serve as the cornerstones of innovative genetics. It is important to mention that by the time Mendel concluded his observations, chromosomes and meiosis were not discovered, yet he was righteously able to put forward the concept for presence of factors, nowadays known genes, liable for heredity. Even though he was not the first individual to have experimented for understanding the phenomenon of heredity, Mendel's predecessors failed to go close to success. This was attributed to the elegance in his strategy and scrutiny of experiments. This was partly also contributed by the selection of material 
he used in his experiments. Garden pea that is Pisum sativum has several characteristics that helped in his research. Number 1, the flowers were cleistogamous that is closed and could be self fertilized or selfed that is they allowed inbreeding. Even though flowers were self pollinating, these could be readily cross fertilized to create hybrids between pure breeding lines, carefully controlled mating and mutual crosses might rule out the outcome of one parent as opposite to the other. Small generation period that allowed Mendel to develop great numbers of floras and progeny allowing computable evaluation that created vigorous outcomes which supported this interpretation. In addition, garden peas have straightforward that is discrete or qualitative traits. Mendel could explicitly decide between two different forms. In respect to above characteristic of experimental material, Mendel's insight contributed to his success. Prior to selecting varieties for his work, Mendel carefully analyzed the pea breeding for two years and selected pure breeding lines that always bred true, producing similar trait generation upon generation. For example, a tall plant which always produces tall plant in self fertilized plants. Further, he constrained his analysis to one or only a limited set of complementary characters in each experimentation. He also reserved precise measurable records and with his knowledge of mathematics, he was able to calculate the product logically. Mendel also had his share of luck because the traits he studied for his experiments were well ordered by genes that were non-linked and even if they were, he completely overlooked such observations. The seven traits observed by Mendel in pea plants were as follows. Seed color which was yellow or green, seed shape which was round or wrinkled, seed coat color which was grey or white, flower position which was axial or terminal, stem length which was short or tall, pod color which was yellow or green and pod shape which was inflated or constricted. Mendel detected seven different easily recognizable characteristics or traits in the pea plants and each of these characteristics had two alternate forms as follows. Number 1, form or shape of the ripe seeds which were round or roundish or angular and wrinkled. Number 2, color of the seed which was pale yellow, bright yellow and orange colored or green. Number 3, color of the seed coat which was either white or grey, grey brown, leather brown with or without violet spotting. Number 4, form or shape of the ripe pods which were simply inflated or deeply constricted and more or less wrinkled. Number 5, color of the unripe pod which was light to dark green or vividly yellow. Number 6, position of the flowers, axial that is dispersed laterally from the core stem or terminal which is bunched at the top of the stem. And number 7, length of the stem, the long axis of 6 to 7 feet or a short one 3 fourth to 1 feet long. The vital objective of Mendel's investigation with peas lies in several fundamental facts. Characters or traits from parents pass as unmodified units 
individual Mendelian factors now known as genes to consecutive groups rendering to conventional ratios. All individuals possess two groups of factors, each one received from either parent. It marks no change if any one character is inborn from male or female, they both donate in the identical way. Further, these factors may sometimes be concealed or expressed but are never lost. In general, sometimes each unit is delivered on independently from all other units. For example, a pea may develop seeds that are both round and yellow or wrinkled and yellow or round and green or wrinkled and green. Certain characters were manifested regularly while others some were not immediately expressed. Mendel's experimentations were scientifically documented over an era of seven years from 1856 to 1863 and he read a paper on the succeeding results at an assembly of the people of natural sciences in 1865 in Brno. This paper was published the following years in the extracts of the society. Though his ideas had been printed in 1866, but nonetheless they mainly went unrecognized up until 1900, which was long after his passing away when his work was rediscovered by three European scientists, Hugo de Veres, Karl Korenz and Eric von Schirmark. When Mendel's investigation was with plants, the elementary basic principles of heredity which he revealed also apply to people and other animals because the mechanisms of heredity are fundamentally the similar for all composite life forms. Mendel's findings can be summarized in the form of three basic principles that are now well thought out all the angles of modern genetics. Number one, the principle of dominance. It says that when dominant allele is existing in an organism, it will mask the presence of recessive allele and the capital F progeny will express dominant gene. Number two, the law of segregation. It states that each trait is controlled by two alleles and that each one gamete comprises of one and only one of these alleles. These alleles are the basis of genetic variability between progenies. Number three, principle of independent assortment. It states that the alleles for one trait separate independently of the alleles for another trait. In other words, this implies that all maternal or paternal alleles do not converge into the same gamete but rather are assorted independently of each other. This also helps to ensure genetic variability among the offsprings. To understand this further, we will look at observations that enabled Mendel to reach the conclusion for formulation of above as principles of genetics. Number four, principle of dominance. Mendel noticed that when he crossbred two parents with unlike types of an individual trait, one of those types apparently disappeared in the hybrid or the heterozygous offspring. However, when the offspring were hybridized with one another, the wiped out trait reappeared in the third generation entirely unchanged in spite of being undetectable in the second generation. Mendel described the type of trait which was noticeable in the hybrids of the first generation as dominant and the one that was invisible in the hybrids as recessive.
Mendel picked Pisum sativum for his experiments. Cross A represents the distribution of tall and dwarf plants over the parental and progenies in capital F1 and capital F2 generations. Note that in the F2 generation only, the dwarfness representing the recessive character reappears. Phenotypic ratio of 3 is to 1 is characteristic of Mendel's principle of dominance. In B, punnett squares showing the mechanism of inheritance of dominant and recessive traits is shown. The punnett square on the left hand side shows a cross amongst true breeding tall and dwarf pea plants representing the cross among parental varieties. The punnett square on the right hand side shows a cross between capital F1 hybrids that result in reappearance of the recessive character. The ratio of distribution is 3 is to 1 in favor of the dominant trait. In diploid organisms that is pure breeding or hybrids, a given character is signified by two contrasting factors known as alleles or allelomorphs. Among the two alleles, only one is capable to show its effect in the individual. Letter symbols can be used to denote these factors. It is known as the dominant or dominant allele. It is shown by capital or uppercase letter of the alphabet. For example, capital T stands for tallness. The other allele which does not show its effect in the heterozygous individual is known as the recessive or recessive allele. An equivalent small or lower case letter is allocated to the recessive. For example, small t stands for dwarfness. Mendel investigated with Pisum sativum for seven characters. In every case, he observed that expression of one trait of the character, for example, capital T or tallness in the case of height of the plant is dominant over the other trait, that is dwarfness corresponding to the same character. It can also be demonstrated experimentally. In case of garden pea plants, one pure or homozygous tall height being about 1.2 to 2 meters and the other pure or homozygous dwarf height being about 0.25 to 0.5 meter were considered by Mendel. Upon crossing the two, the progeny called the first filial or capital F1 generation comprised of all tall plants height being 1.2 to 2 meters, even though they have also received a factor for dwarfness. Upon self-breeding capital F1 plants, which were all tall, it was further observed that individuals of capital F2 generation were both tall and dwarf and approximately corresponded to the ratio of 3 is to 1. It was concluded that in capital F1 plants, both the factors for tallness and dwarfness are present. Though the factor for dwarfness was incapable to express in attendance of factor for tallness. As a result, the factor governing tallness is dominant over the factor responsible for dwarfness, which is recessive. Mendel was much ahead of his time. However, the principle of dominance cannot be applied to all traits universally. As we know now that Mendel's discovery was confined to complete dominance, which is only one of the numerous unlike kinds of dominance relationships. It is also important to observe that dominance is essentially always well defined with respect to the phenotypic 
traits of the heterozygote. Principle of segregation. The principle of segregation states that the two factors of a character that are present in diploid individuals keep their individuality separate at the time of gametogenesis or sporogenesis and are randomly distributed to gametes. The paired condition is then restored again during fertilization. The principle of segregation can be deduced from a reciprocal monohybrid cross. Consider a cross between a pure tall pea plant that is capital T capital T and a dwarf pea plant that is small t small t. The hybrids that is capital T small t or plants of the first filial generation are all tall though they have also received the factor for dwarfness. As per Mendel's principle of dominance, the factor for tallness is dominant while the factor for dwarfness is recessive. If the hybrids are allowed to self-breed, the progenies of tall pea plants in the second filial or capital F2 generation display both tall and dwarf phenotypes in the ratio of 3 is to 1. Moreover, self-breeding of these plants demonstrates that amongst the tall plants, only one third breed true that is yield only tall plants, the remaining two third of the F2 tall plants that is 50 percent of the total F2 plants were hybrid plants and produce both tall and dwarf plants in the ratio 3 is to 1. In contrast, all the dwarf plants breed true that is small t small t producing only dwarf plants. It can therefore be concluded that even though the phenotypic ratio of F2 generation is 3 is to 1, the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 with one pure tall capital T capital T, two hybrid tall capital T small t and one dwarf small t small t. Number 1, although F1 plants show only one alternative or dominant trait of a character, it actually carries alleles for both the traits of the character. This is shown in F2 generation where the second alternative or the recessive trait reappears. F1 plants are thus genetically hybrid or capital T small t in the given case. Second point, F1 plants are a result of fusion of male and female gametes through fertilization as they carry the gene complement of capital T small t. The fusion of gametes must have brought only one factor each that is capital T from the dominant parent and small t from the recessive parent. Point 3. F2 generation is produced by self-breeding of F1 plants. F2 generation consists of three types of plants, pure tall, hybrid tall and dwarf. This possibility can occur only when number 1, the two Mendelian factors present in F1 plants segregate during gamete formation. Number 2, gametes carry a single factor or allele for a character, 50 percent of one type and 50 percent of the second type. And number 3, the fusion of gametes or fertilization is random. Meanwhile, only one of the two factors transfer into a gamete, 50 percent of the male and female gametes created by F1 plant retain the factor for tallness while the remaining 50 percent carry the factor for dwarfness. The principle of segregation is the most fundamental principle of heredity 
and can be universally applied with no exception. Some scientists like Bateson call the principle of segregation as the belief of purity of gametes as during segregation of the two Mendelian factors of trait fallouts in gametes, only one factor out of a pair is received by each gamete. As a product, gametes are always pure for a character. It is also called as law of non-mixing of alleles. In his further efforts to verify and extend his results of monohybrid crosses, Mendel also crossed garden pea plants that were differing in two characters, that is a dihybrid cross. This enabled him to appreciate inheritance of two different genes, that is two pairs of alleles at a time. It was observed that inheritance of one pair of alleles, that is one character, does not interfere in the inheritance of the other pair of alleles, that is the second character. Based on this, Mendel proposed a set of generalizing postulations, which is now known as the principle of independent assortment. According to this principle, two factors for each character assort or separate independently of the factors of other characters at the time of gamete development and get arbitrarily rearranged in the offspring generating both parental and new groups of traits. The principle of independent assortment may be considered by means of a dihybrid cross, for example, among pure breeding pea plants having yellow and round seeds, both dominant as capital Y, capital Y, capital R, capital R and pure breeding pea plants having green and wrinkled seeds, both recessive at small y, small y, small r, small r. When these true breeding plants are crossed, plants of the F1 generation have all yellow and round seeds, genotype being capital Y, small y, capital R, small r because yellow and round traits are respectively dominant over green and wrinkled traits. However, upon self-breeding, the outcomes second filial or F2 generation shows four types of plants that are yellow and round, yellow and wrinkled, green and round and green and wrinkled. The results obtained by Mendel were as follows, yellow and round equaling 315 by 556 gives around 9 is to 16, yellow and wrinkled 101 upon 556 approximately 3 by 16, green and round equals 108 upon 556 equals 3 upon 16 and finally green and wrinkled 32 upon 556 equals 1 by 16. This is the phenotypic ratio of a dihybrid cross which is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. In addition, occurrence of 4 varieties of plants that is 2 more than the parental types in the F2 generation of dihybrid cross clearly indicates the fact that the factors for two characters separate autonomous of the others as if the other pair of factors is not present. This can also be proven by studying the individual characters of seed color and seed texture separately. A dihybrid cross showing the distribution of plants with the above mentioned characters upon close examination of the outcomes, it can be observed that the output is alike to a monohybrid ratio, that is seed color yellow 9 plus 3 equaling 12, green 
3 plus 1 equaling 4 or 3 is to 1, while seed texture round 9 plus 3 equaling 12 and wrinkled 3 plus 1 equaling 4 or 3 is to 1. That the factors of the two characters sort independently can be demonstrated by multiplying the different possibilities. A dye hybrid crosses between yellow smooth seeded pea varieties and green and wrinkled seeded garden pea plants. All plants in F1 are yellow and smooth seeded. However, upon selfing the F1 progeny, four different phenotypic variations were derived that were distributed in the phenotypic ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. At the genotype level, these four varieties were of the nine types yielding a genotypic ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1. As all four characters namely smooth and wrinkled textures as well as yellow and green colored seeds are observed in the F2 generation, it proves that expression of none of these characters have any influence over expression of the other. This is in according to the principle of independent assortment. It is now known that the principle or law of independent assortment is appropriate only to those factors or genes which are mostly found on various chromosomes or distantly on the similar chromosomes. A single chromosome may bear hundreds of genes, all of which are inherited together except when crossing over takes place during meiosis. This occurrence of inheritance of a number of genes or factors because of their occurrence with each other on the same chromosomes is called linkage. Mendel himself found that white flowered pea plants always forms white seeds while red flowered plants always generate grey seeds although he was unable to explain the results. Mendel briefed his findings in the form of three basic principles of heredity without having any knowledge of mitosis, meiosis or chromosomes. Regardless of its significance, Mendel's work was overruled at first and was not broadly acknowledged even after he died. During his own time, most biologists thought that the impression that all characteristics were transferred to the next generation by blending inheritance in which traits from each parent are be around together. Instances of this occurrence are now described by the action of multiple genes with measurable effects such as skin color in humans. Validity of his work was also established with understanding of meiosis where paternal and maternal chromosomes separate into different gametes with distinguished traits of a character. Further investigation and extension of Mendel's work on other organisms revealed that there were exceptions to his results. Thus, his principles or laws have their limitations. For example, the independent assortment is held valid only for non-linked genes while exception to the principle of dominance were observed in the case of codominance. Also for genes found on the X chromosome, expression of the trait can be linked to the sex of the offspring. Mendel did not mention any overlap of characters as the traits he has considered were controlled by non-linked genes. That is, they were controlled by alleles on different chromosomes or were located far off on the same chromosome. Nonetheless, Mendel's work led the foundation for genetics which is defined 
as the branch of biology that deals with the detailed study of heredity and variation. For this, Mendel himself is famous as the father of genetics. Gene interaction is the impact of alleles and non-alleles on the normal phenotypic expression of genes. It may be interallelic or intragenic or non-allelic or intergenic. In the intragenic interaction, the two alleles existing on similar gene locus on two homologous chromosomes of a gene relate in such a manner as to produce a phenotypic expression varying from the typical dominant recessive phenotype. For example, incomplete dominance, co-dominance, multiple alleles, etc. In intergenic or non-allelic contact, more than two self-determining genes present on the same or dissimilar chromosomes interact to create a different expression. For example, epistasis, duplicate genes, complementary genes, supplementary genes, lethal genes, inhibitory genes, etc. We will study about these in further details in the next section. To summarize what we have learned till now, Mendel studied the genetic inheritance in garden pea, pisum sativum plants by cultivating about 29,000 pea plants. His observations and findings established the presence of patterns in the garden pea that further led to formation of basic principles that serve as the cornerstones of new genetics. Mendel briefed his findings in the form of three basic principles of heredity without having any knowledge of mitosis, meiosis or chromosomes. His findings remained obscure for more than nearly three decades. The principle of dominance states that when dominant allele is present in an organism, it will mask the existence of the recessive trait and the F1 progeny will express only the dominant gene. The law of segregation states that each trait is controlled by two alleles and that each gamete contains one and only one of these alleles. These alleles are a basis of genetic variability between offspring. The principle of independent assortment states that the alleles for one trait separate independently of alleles of the other trait. In addition, this implies that all maternal or paternal alleles do not converge into the same gamete but rather are separated independently of each other. This is useful to confirm genetic variability between offspring.